Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, across all nations, races, and denominations, what is up? The King of Lightning here today bringing you guys and gals One Punch! One Punch Man! Episode 10 review. If you have not seen the episode live reaction, then of course there will be an annotation right here as well as a link in the box below. Now listen, man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, One Punch Man finally has gotten to Lord Boros. Ever since I saw this dude in the manga, I was like, yo, please, please bring him in motion. Please bring him. And finally... Lord Boros has arrived. Oh, man. Woo! I've been waiting for this shit, man. We've been waiting for this shit forever, man. Lord Boros, he's coming. He's coming. Lord Boros is coming to town. Lord Boros is coming to town. Lord Boros is coming to town. Yeah! Lord Boros is feeling the holiday jingle. He has a holiday spirit, and he's bringing in the fireworks heavy, man. He came in A-City gone in an instant. Now, Grand, that was his ship by himself, but still, we can say that like the, like the whole thing. The ship, the monster, the aliens, they are a part of the Lord Boros alien invasion unit, group, whatever. And I love it. Off the gate, immense sense of danger. Your whole city surrounding the headquarters was wiped out. And the only reason why the headquarters is still there is because of Metal Knight. He designed the actual building itself to withstand clearly what appears to be a scale of destruction that may, you may want to, honestly, you know, fuck it, it is. It's clearly like some nuclear level shit. That's what it's designed for. All right, you don't wipe out an entire city in an instant with pure hypersonic giant metal bullets. They're not even cannons anymore, they're just giant metal bullets. And... And, 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 oh, dude, like, you, you know what? Okay, let me start here. Let me stop rambling. Let me go on with the actual review portion. Now, first of all, the episode itself is mainly a set-up episode. It's not more so, like, like, we make story progression, obviously, but it sets up the villains. It sets up the heroes that are going to take part in this battle against these villains. And then that's what it mainly boils down to. And the fact that these villains... Uh, Lord Boros, in particular, could be a god-level threat. So, obviously, god means that it's going to be a threat to all of humanity. And, again, one city is already gone. Dragon-level threats, multiple cities are in danger. These fuckers, and the fact that the next episode is called The Dominator of the Universe, The Dominator of the Universe... That is just more signs that this guy is probably a god-level threat. Or he could be a god-level threat. So, uh, Lord Boros, keep, obviously, keep an eye on Lord Boros. Now, moving on to characterization overall. So, we're talking about character development, character introduction, that kind of stuff. First of all, when it comes to the S-Class heroes, they're all there with the exception of two. Blast and Metal Knight. Now, Metal Knight, we can say maybe he's working on some type of project. Maybe he's halfway around the world. Maybe he doesn't care. Because we know some things about Metal Knight. Not a lot, but some things. But overall, there's still guesses. Blast? No one knows. No idea. In fact, based on what Child Emperor said, from the way he said it, it looks like Blast does not show up to any meetings at all, ever. So, we're not too sure what's going on there. But Blast, the number one hero in the association, is MIA. And has been for what appears to be quite a bit of time. Now, that being said, moving on to those that we that we can actually characterize, that did get some characterization and character development and whatnot. Uh, first of all, Pudi Pudi Prisoner, basically, we see him actually utilize the teachings of the Deep Sea King. And now, every one of his attacks and his Angel Rush has killing intent. Therefore, the Angel Rush becomes the Dark Angel Rush. And that's really it. So, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is there. Metal Bat is Yusuke Yurameshi-like. It's very obvious. That's what they're going for. He appears to be a high school 
delinquent who has a thing like he wants to be a good brother for his sister she had some type of like play and he's missing the play and he's worried about that obviously but that being said that being said he does have that strong beginning of series Yu Yu Hakusho Yusuke Yurimeshi vibe and that demeanor that's very obvious and the Pompadour only assists in that so that's what they're going for him Tank Top Master is as far as we can see, the top of the tank tops. So tank top black hole, tank top tiger, they're all inferior to tank top master. He is their leader, maybe. There is one person that I do want to say had a I think a pretty substantial name change. And that is Flashy Flash. Because in the original manga, his name is not Flashy Flash. His name is Light Speed Flash. Now that obviously is indicative of his power because when you have someone like speed of sound sonic and you can see that his power his skills are based on predominantly speed speed of sound sonic and flashy flare and flashy i can't say and flashy flash's actual name say that five times fast and flashy flashes legitimate name is light speed flash well you can kind of take a poke at what his skill set's gonna be just saying uh watch dog man is whatever super alloy dark uh luster or dark shine i think it is in the manga i mean <laughs> i mean he's just a jack brother uh, that's all there really is to it uh, he's just a jack black dude who likes other folks staying at his muscles like, oh, yeah, they're all checking me out. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Pig God just munching. Just snacking for hours. Like, his bag of goodies is infinite. Holy hell. Just burgers, heroes, Twinkies, left or right Twix, doesn't matter. He, he, he don't care. He's eating them. I'm like, yo. Damn, dude! Like he just he just keeps on eating shit. I'm like, yo, I want to see Pig God fight the most because I'm trying to think how the fuck does this guy fight? How is he s? What's what's going on there? Pig God, keep an eye out for. Uh, Drive Knight, nothing on him. Zombie Man, nothing on him really. Uh, Child Emperor, he's basically Game Master. I mean, I mean, that's the, the moment I saw him. Immediate Game Master vibe. Nothing more to say about him. Uh, Atomic Samurai, I think, is a... Uh, he's more of a strong-headed version of Bang. I mean, they're kind of like pseudo-rivals because when it comes to the martial arts, Bang is the... Uh, what is it called? It's like, okay, like you, have, you have the hand-to-hand -hand guys and then you have the weapon guys. The actual name escapes me. It's like Kendo and then like... I, you know, there, there's a name for it specifically. The martial arts guys that go for the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the ones that go for the weapon combat. I forgot what they're called specifically, but that's the yeah, that's the connection between those two at this point in time. And how he's scoping out how he thinks that Saitama and Genos are Bang's disciples or up to, or soon-to-be disciples. So, And he has clearly, based on the episode, uh, one, of his, one of his disciples, uh, Ian fought against the one alien and was getting his ass destroyed, got his hand blown off. So clearly, he's keeping an eye on Bang, because in his eyes, Bang could be trying to build up his dojo once again and add some competition. Uh, then you have Tornado of Terror, who, at the beginning of the episode, pulled some really cool stuff with the meteorite. She pulled the Fuji Tower, that was very impressive. And I noticed how, in the comment section of, the, of Live Reaction, the thirst for Tornado of Terror is strong. Her, her actual anime name is... Um, terrible tornado. Fuck that shit. Tornado of Terror or Tatsumaki. Tatsumaki, the thirst is strong for her. And I can see why, obviously. Because listen, I'm a leg man. I'm an ass man. I love that part of the female body. Ass, legs, I love it. Tits are nice, obviously. But I prefer the lower body. That's what I go for the most. A nice, smooth set of legs. Mm, I'm there. I'm there. <sighs> Savage. But... Here's the thing. She's one of those girls in anime that looks like a child, but in reality, like for example, 
she looks 13, but she's actually a 2,000-year-old vampire. Ooh. It's that kind of shit. And she's actually in, like, her, like, late 20s, early 30s from an age standpoint. But she looks like she's 13, 14. And technically, that is the legal age of consent in Japan. So, all the pedos that want to have at it, Japan's where you got to go. However, in America, in America, the legal age of consent is not 13. <laughs> So, some guys will find that unfortunate. But, all I gotta say is, control yourselves. Gentlemen, control yourselves. Put the mojo away in the closet for now. Alright? And then come back when she grows up. Shit. <laughs> when she actually grows up physically. When her appearance matches her age. Fuck. So, that's all I can really say about that. And finally, King... King, according to Super Alloy, is the strongest hero. Not Blast, not Tatsumaki, not Pig God. <laughs> Pig God. King is the strongest. Now, we've gotten some stuff in the past in the series pertaining to King before. Like, he had a book on how to attain indomitable willpower. Some shit like that. And what's very important to note is when the building was hit, when the entire city was wiped out by Boros' ship, most of the heroes were a little bit on edge. They were worried. They were freaking out a little bit. King literally sat there and did not budge, didn't phase. Like the shit was nothing. Just arms folded, heart heart, heart racing, boom, 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 just sitting there. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like, the dude is stone cold. Holy shit, man. Ice water in his veins. And what's also very important to note is how King is the only person thus far to make Tatsumaki back off. Tatsumaki is a stuck-up little bitch. She is. She truly is. And here King is, because he's seeing how he can't attack the ship. It's too far away. Let's call Metal Knight. And she's going, well, that's pathetic. Oh, my God. You're supposed to be the number one. What the fuck? King, King just gives her the stare like, bitch, if you don't fucking... And then she backs off. Like, you know what? I'll just take care of it myself. The first person in the anime to make... The stuck up Tatsumaki back off. Yeah. <laughs> There's mad hype for King. Oh, the hype is real for this guy. The hype is fucking real. So, <laughs> oh my god, King, yo. Oh, the things to come. The things to come for King. Oh, man. They're going to drop draws. But either way. <laughs> In more ways than one. So, that right there is the character lineup. Moving on. I mean, really quick. The overall story progression, it's there. And it's mainly just set up. The episode itself is once again a set up. It's a set up episode. There to establish the bad guys and the good guys. And Saitama's already in there. And that's really it from a story progression standpoint. Whether or not this actually fulfills the prophecy of... The Earth being in trouble, we'll have to wait and see about that. We'll have to wait and see. Moving on with the last thing, animation. Overall, is fantastic, as always. Don't get me wrong, love it. But there is one thing that I was really hoping to see in the anime. And that was a phenomenally designed ship. The ship in the anime looks like this. Basically, it's purple. It's all purple, the same color scheme and whatnot. Now look at the manga. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Holy fuck, man. I mean, it's on some whole new level. Holy frick, man. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I understand that if they were to focus too much on the ship's overall design to make it look like that, then that would have probably taken up a lot of time, a lot of money. Therefore, 
the other parts of the episode may have suffered when it came to animation quality. But regardless, like, the ship isn't bad in the anime. It's not bad at all. It looks, like, really damn good. But compared to what the manga delivered, like, the manga makes it look like it's a genuine floating city filled with life, and it's vibrant, and it's intimidating as all fuck. Like, you pee your pants a little bit. You're like, bro, like this? Nah, like, they're fucked, dude. Like, <laughs> like they're really fucked. And you get that, but not to the same degree. So I just wanted to show you guys that because sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes from the way I see things, even though the differences between the two are minimal, it is those little differences that give, that make the scene all the more impactful, that give it the extra step ahead of what the adaptation would show. And in a lot of cases, it's the reverse, where the anime does a much better job of depicting a scene than the manga does. So, to each its own, and, and it depends on the scene and, and the series, but this was a case, I think, of where the manga just really outshined the anime. The anime, again, was nowhere near bad. It was wonderful. But the manga, that's some of the best work I've seen in manga, period. Like, that, that's honestly up there. Just Boros' shit by itself is honestly up there. So, that's it. I'm done. So, King of Lightning, uh, the overall rating for the episode, because it is, in a nutshell, a setup episode, I normally don't give yo's for setup, but it is an amazing plus. That's damn near. That's a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, so, an amazing plus episode of One Punch Man. And I will see you guys and guys later. So King Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day.